Gus and Alexander, an unlike pair. Yet their longings were the same. Alexander, too, dreamt of unlimited power. His battlefield would be the whole world. Alexander glaubte an seine Sendung, an die Herkunft von Herakles und von Jupiter und sah nun das Perserreich vor sich. Und jemand, der so viele Erfolge im Leben hatte, der hört in der Regel auch nicht auf. Ganz wenige große Eroberer, die irgendwann gesagt haben, so, jetzt reicht's. How strong was the resistance to Alexander's ambitious plans? This question fascinated the archaeologist Ernst Herzfeld. In 1933, his team made a sensational discovery at Persepolis. They uncovered thousands of cuneiform texts on clay tablets, the archives of the ancient Persian Empire. These documents reveal what life in ancient Persia was like, not just at court, but also the everyday life of the people. The great kings created an outstanding infrastructure. Traders and travelers followed established, secure routes, and a network of caravanserais was a guarantee of trade in the multinational state. Es gibt ein zentrales, herrschendes Volk, das aber viele kulturelle Einflüsse von außen akzeptiert, übernimmt, sehr lernfähig ist, außerordentlich tolerant und von daher hat das Perserreich ja in der Tat lange Jahrhunderte hinweg diesen gesamten Nahen Osten als Imperium Persicum beherrschen können. The most obvious proof of the Persians' cultural sophistication is about 100 kilometers from Persepolis. Pasargade, the old capital of the empire. Its palace was magnificent. Now, only a few columns remain. Researchers from the University of Lyon are trying to reconstruct a picture of the city as it was. Using thousands of aerial photographs, they have examined the whole area to the centimeter and have revealed what was invisible to the naked eye. Hidden structures in the ground. These structures contain the secret of Pazagade, a gigantic irrigation system that sustained the dusty wasteland. Dans l'héritage achéménide, il faut aussi parler des jardins que l'on appelle en persan, en fait, qui est le mot paradis, et ce sont des jardins extrêmement bien aménagés, très symétriques, parfaitement irrigués, et on a à Passargat le plus ancien exemple de ce type de jardin. The water that made Passagade a fertile garden came from the melted ice and snow of the Zagros mountains a few hundred kilometers away. The great kings knew how to use this rich resource. And water was the most valuable treasure of this desert world. Water that transformed the brown wasteland into a colorful garden. The elixir of life. Only a few ruins are left, like this stone pool, part of the gigantic plumbing system in the palace precinct. Fountains are an everyday sight in modern cities, most are purely decorative. But the people of ancient times used this technology to conquer the desert. Through great canals, or canats, like this one, the life-giving water flowed through the desert into the capital. Some of the water pipes survive after more than two and a half thousand years. They are masterpieces of ancient hydraulic engineering. Underground rivers that shielded the precious water from the sun and conducted it safely to the heart of the empire.
The people of the Persian Empire, the ancestors of today's residents, were content. They benefited from the advantages of a centralized administration that removed the boundaries between peoples. Liberalization of trade, a common currency, and unified weights and measures promoted solid economic growth. The faces of the people in this town still seem to reflect the ancient pride in the achievement of their ancestors, who created a paradise in the desert. What mysterious energy drove Alexander on? Did he feel chosen by fate to rule the world? And Darius? What weapons did he have left, apart from his rage, his failure to grasp that a little David was challenging the mighty Goliath? Darius's strength was also his greatest weakness. It was the legacy of his great ancestors that paralyzed him. Carved in stone, this proclamation claims that only the Persian king is destined by God to rule the world. Darius's ancestors came from country like this, country that breeds toughness, that must be forced to yield a meager living. They can be found here today, the tribal fathers of the culture, nomads who can still wield their ancient weapons and whose way of life is still the same as it was two and a half thousand years ago. Their songs tell of a hard life between the mountains and the steppe, of restless wandering, always following the pasture, a merciless life, a fight against one's and others. Man and beast alike must defer to nature. They must accept the unchanged nature of the conditions and derive all their strength from doing so. Go barefoot over snow-covered mountain passes. Darius was a child of this world, hard, pitiless, born to win. That is what the legacy of his ancestors demanded. And now, he gathered the largest force his empire had ever seen. A hundred and fifty thousand men, he was using everything he had. But as yesterday's loser, where would he get the mental strength to turn the tables? From the stars? In the Astronomical Calculations Institute in Heidelberg, scientists are studying a list of cosmic events from the time of King Darius. They could provide clues about unusual heavenly phenomena that possibly changed the course of history. Dr. Lutz Schmadl is programming an event that occurred over Mesopotamia shortly before 8 p.m. on the 20th of September, 331 B.C. An eclipse of the moon. The finsternis was also sichtbar über dem ganzen indischen Ozean, von der Küste aus Afrika bis Zentralasien bis nach hinter Indien. Muss sich also an ein bemerkenswertes Ereignis gehandelt haben. Die Finsternis hat dann schließlich geendet mit dem Austritt des Mondes aus dem Kernschatten der Erde gegen 23 Uhr Ort. What impression must this sign from the heavens have made on Darius and his soldiers? Was it seen as a good or a bad omen? Did superstition have a decisive influence on the course and outcome of the Battle of Gav Gamala? Historians are certain that Darius was a follower of the ancient religion of the preacher Zoroaster. Fire is the symbol of the Zoroastrian god, Ahura Mazda. The religion has survived to the present day. <laughs> 